Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 89 of the Sophie Art Podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things. And this one is going to be about the things. No, it's not. It's going to be about the art because I'm going to be looking at an article, an art article, (laughs) an art article in issue number nine of the Graphite magazine which is a magazine that used to come out by 3D Total Publishing, but it stopped. It stopped at the beginning of the year. But issue 9 has an article in it called Ethereal Ethereal, Ethereal Portraits Sketching a Character in Pencil with Sarah Tepes. It's Sarah. Sarah (laughs) Tepes. S-A-R-A-T-E-P-E-S. Sarah Teepees, and I'll go over that in a minute. So that's basically what the podcast is going to be about. There's a couple of little things to talk about first. So in terms of video games, I've I've been able to stick to my little rule, and I haven't played any games since Saturday. Today is Thursday the 12th of December, so it's basically two weeks now that I've been able to just play games on a Saturday, and I'm really liking this. What it's done is, it's made it so that Saturday is almost like Christmas Day. Because it it means Saturday I can play video games. So I I look forward to it. So I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Hopefully it can stay like this. I've also started running again. I stopped running in 2017 because I picked up an injury. And then before I knew it, like a year or two years had passed and I hadn't been running. So again, this because I'm... I've found a really nice balance since playing these video games. I've started running as well. So Saturday night, after the gaming session's finished, I'm going to go out for a little run. And it's just, that's going to be quite nice because it means you're going to get away from the screen. So just before going to bed, I can go out for a run and sort of empty my mind of looking at the screens, which would be quite nice. And... After this podcast, I'm going to record another little podcast about the dreams. So, next, the next About the Things episode, which will be the last Sunday of December, I'm going to be looking at some lucid dreams. I've already recorded one where I got to meet Muji, but this one, I had a lucid dream a couple nights ago, which I'm calling Nan. It's Nan! <laughs> And then I had one last night, which I'm calling Dad. Dad? <laughs> Dad? Is that you, Dad? It's really fascinating. What One of them is an amazing... All three of these lucid dreams have been amazing. Really little, but powerful. So I'm going to talk about those on the About the Things coming up. That's basically it, really. Today is Thursday the 12th of December. So it's time to, if you're watching on YouTube, because you can, you can watch this podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson. And it's time to open up the advent calendar. So this is day 12 and we still haven't had a Santa behind day number 12. So let's see what we've got today. Ah, oh, it's a bit of a boring one. We have Milky Bar Kid, Milky Bar Kid handing out presents which is a bit boring. And then we have a little bit of white chocolate, which looks like looks like an ice cream cone, I think. <laughs> Something a bit weird. So but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little experiment here. So I'm gonna I've got my hot chocolate which I love. I love hot chocolate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my little piece of white chocolate on the hot chocolate and I'm gonna see what it tastes like. <laughs> I'm quite excited. <laughs> Mm. It's already started melting. <laughs> That's actually quite nice. It's not as good as milkshake. If you put milkshake in with a hot chocolate, <laughs> it tastes that tastes lovely. That tastes alright, but, but not amazing. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about? Oh yeah, I've just posted a video on YouTube looking at this new art book. 
it's not a new one but i've just got it it's called fantasy creatures and it's by imagine fx and it's the ultimate guide to mastering digital painting techniques and this art book is really it kind of surprised me how amazing it is because i've I, I thought it was going to be nice but it really it's right up there with one of my favorite books now there's a piece of artwork in here of a, a fairy because it's all fantasy art there's a piece of a fairy and it's it's amazing it's one of the best pieces of artwork i have seen when i've been looking in these art books so i'm so happy that i got that you'll be you can see me a click look video of this book on youtube at youtube.com you'll also be able to find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com but the website is still sort of broken at the minute but this article it's going to be probably a bit all over the place but I'm, I'm really quite excited for this so we're going to be looking at this article called ethereal portraits and what we're going to be looking at is She's going to talk about materials, thumbnails, placing the features, and then she goes into each. She goes into each thing, like looking at the eyes, the nose, the mouth, eyebrows, eyelashes, and hair, and then talks about detailing. It's going to be. Really, I think it's going to be quite a fascinating little article. But what it is is <laughs> what it is is. I love that. What it is, is... <clears throat> I can't say that without it making me feel a bit weird. What it is, is, is... Oh, sorry. There's, there's something weird about that. What it is, is... There must be a, a better way to say that. But what it is, is... I used to do pencil drawings. I say used to, because I... Pencil drawing, like portrait pencil drawings. I haven't... I was thinking about this just a minute ago. I haven't done a pencil portrait drawing for about, probably about two years. And reading this article, it it was amazing how, like, much, I suppose, knowledge or, or stuff, like, come back to me. Stuff I'd forgotten about. Because she was talking about, like, drawing the hair and stuff. And things that I'd learnt from Lee Hammond in her book, Lifelike Drawings from... <laughs> Drawing lifelike portraits from photographs. In that article, she, Lee Hammond, in that book, Lee Hammond just, she she had a way of explaining how to do realistic portraits. Really simple, but it like really went in. She broke it down really. That book is amazing. It's definitely one of my favourite how to draw art books. But I'm, I'm showing one of my little pencil drawings. Because it kind of, this article made me, it made me want to do a, a portrait drawing. But at the same time, I do feel like I've sort of moved on. But what's good about this article is, she's drawing, she's drawing a portrait from her imagination. And it's still sort of semi-realistic. So it got me excited because I was thinking... Like at this phase of my life or whatever, <laughs> I'm I'm sort of drawing characters and stuff on my imagination. But I start thinking, maybe one day I'll like end up doing stuff like this. So it, it's like a portrait. I I start thinking maybe I'll end up pulling in stuff that I've done realistically into my characters and stuff. Because what I do notice that everything you learn it always seems to come together in the end so like when i was younger i studied computing and i i used to do loads of stuff on websites and for the longest time i thought that was sort of a waste of time but then years later i find art i start drawing and i start wanting to do a website so all those skills that i'd learned which they sort of lay dormant for years all of a sudden they sort of made sense and I think the same thing's going to happen with these realistic pencil drawings. I've got a feeling for the next few years, I'm not really going to do much realistic. And then one day, 
I'll suddenly pull those skills back. So this is why I love studying and stuff, because you never know how things are going to come together in the end. It's quite beautiful, really. So if you're watching this on the YouTube, <laughs> on the YouTube, what I'll do is I'll put the camera up above the, mag the magazine so you'll be able to see the article because she goes through each step of the of the portrait and it's quite fascinating seeing the thing take shape but if you're only listening on the podcast as an audio hopefully it will still be really good and hopefully we can learn some things which would be nice uh, i get it. basically i think that's it really little dennis is here with us he's getting quite excited now about christmas aren't you dennis <laughs> yes i really do feel like this little dennis is alive I know it sounds weird. Little Dennis is a little hand puppet. I saw a little friend from this morning. Whilst I was at work cleaning, there's Cadbury's have got for Christmas, they've got these little boxes of chocolates for kids with little puppets. And one of them is a frog... What's he called? Frig... Friggle... What's he called? That frog? F Fraggle the frog? <laughs> Fraggle rock? No. Little, that little frog that Cadbury's have got... You can get a little hand puppet, so I might I might buy that as another little friend for Dennis, because Dennis Dennis likes his little friends. Dennis likes friends, but Dennis is going to start this one. <coughs> Ding! So let's get into this article, and I will also go through my notes and stuff. But I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk about it. So let's get into this one then. It's, we're going to be looking at issue number nine of the Graphite magazine. Absolutely love this magazine. It's such a shame that they stopped making it. But this little article is with the artist Sara Tepes, T E P E S, and you can find her website at s a r u c a t e p e s dot com. And I'll put a link and everything in the description, in the show notes. But she seems to do, she seems to be doing both traditional and digital. And mainly, it appears to be like portraits, female portraits. You can also find her on Instagram, again at s a r u c a t e p e s. And she seems really cool. I've started following her. And beautiful image here of a female portrait but also pencil drawings and stuff you can also find her on youtube and i watched quickly one of her little videos she seems really cool and she's doing digital and traditional so that, that's quite cool this article though is going to be looking at traditional pencil drawings and if we get straight into it i'll, I'll go straight to the the drawing that she does it's a beautiful female like almost like a i would almost say she's a bit like a fairy very mystical but they they use the word in the article ethereal portraits i didn't know what that meant so i had to look it up ethereal means extremely delicate and light in a way that seems not to be of this world I love that. That's kind of dreamy. So straight away I was like, oh, I love I love the sound of that. And this week's inspirational quote actually comes from this article. It's going to be really, really cool. I like that little quote. But I've got a load of notes. But I think what I'm going to do, I'll quickly skim over my notes to give an idea of what this article is about. So I came away from it thinking about light strokes big shapes starting with big shapes and moving to the detail which is something they keep saying on svslearn.com the reason i put light strokes is because she many times she said about starting with light strokes until you have got your placement and then start doing darker darker strokes my issue is i have a tendency to go too dark too soon and and then it becomes really hard to it becomes hard to find your lines. 
So this is something I've got to practice. And I really like that she kept saying saying about it because likely Hammond says, one of my favourite quotes, repetition is the key to learning. If you keep reading that you've got to do light strokes, hopefully when you sit down to do drawing you can remember light strokes. It's, I just I've always found it a bit hard. I've put here beautiful eyes. Her characters and I say characters because even in her in her other paintings that I've looked at, beautiful eyes. She creates really beautiful eyes. I've put here how it's a bit like a puzzle. Talk about that in a minute. How when you're doing a portrait, this is one of those things that it, it like came back to me, is how when you're doing a portrait, you'll draw something and then you'll draw something else and it changes the thing you've just drawn. So you start realising that everything is linked together. Even though it doesn't, re you don't realise it, like the whole thing is linked together. So you're drawing the portrait in individual pieces, like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, but you're also drawing it all together. It's almost a bit like a paradox, because you're drawing a little piece of it, but at the same time you are affecting the big piece. I really like that. Hopefully I'll talk about that a bit in a minute. I've put render eyes as if eyes are wrong. It will all be all... I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Put some, I can't read my notes sometimes. Talk about eyelashes. I said how... I've, I realised or remembered how powerful eyelashes are. She's got a little tip in here. Which I love this little tip. So it's a tip about rendering eyelashes. I, I never knew this. So hopefully again I can remember this. Because... It's a really good tip about how you can make the eyelashes. You can bring dimension to the eyelashes. It's really cool. It's quite a simple thing as well. What else have we got here? She talks about thick lines and thin lines. She talks about a little tip at the end about freckles, which I think is cool. Because what she does is, you realise at the end that she's when she starts playing and adding details at the end... That's when she starts bringing character to the, the drawing. So that was quite fun. I talked about mirror can be reference and fast and slow strokes. It reminded me of something that Jake Parker said. What's, where is it? I can't find it. Jake Parker said something in it. When she talked about it, it reminded me. Oh, yeah. Consistent. <laughs> consistent. I can't say that word. Variety. Variety. Consistent variety. Again, it's like another paradox. You've got to consistently be varied. And Jake Parker talked about that. When we were in his inking course, you're practicing lines and one of the one of the parts of it he's talking about you want to get consistent variety. So you you want to have little lines and long lines. But you want them all to be going in the same direction. This is for a certain type of hatching. So even though you're changing the lines, like the size of them, you're still keeping them consistent. It's amazing. She talks about that in here when she talks about the eyebrows. So that's basically it. What I'm going to do now is go into the article and just see what, see what comes up, really. So she starts out by talking about the materials to use. What I love about this is she keeps it in incredibly simple and I love simple. I think if you can keep things simple, especially when you're studying and stuff, the less variables you've got when you're studying and, and practicing, like the easier it is to focus. Because if you've got, well for this, she starts out by talking about the tools. So she only uses one little pencil one piece of paper and a kneaded eraser and a sharpener and that is it four tools how incredibly simple is that i really like that i'm gonna i'll start by reading the the little intro of the article so you get an idea of what it's all about and it says in this tutorial i am going to explain the general process that i go through when drawing a portrait of a woman in pencil I use a combination of minimal strokes and varied pencil pressure to create wispy looking lines. 
I like that word, wispy. While still keeping a defined structure to the piece. Again, it's another sort of paradox. She's got wispy, which sounds a bit like chaotic and out of control, with defined structure. So she's keeping it structured. I'm going to do a podcast in the future about art paradoxes, because there's so many paradoxes in art, and I find paradoxes fascinating, because I do believe we are inside of a paradox. I think like reality is a paradox, and there's like time and stuff. Everything that creates reality seems to be a paradox, which is why it's so hard to it's so hard sometimes to work out what's going on in this reality. But she says, "Feel free to use reference photos for your drawing. I am going. I am drawing this character from my imagination, which that to me is even more impressive. The fact that she creates a beautiful portrait completely from her imagination. But I think you have to." You have to learn how to do it with reference first before you can start getting into not using reference. But something they said at SVS Learn is, even at the point when you're not using reference, you will still be using reference. That's even that's a sort of a paradox. But because they say like you're you won't be using reference, but you will still from time to time pull in references. So I don't think you ever really stop using references. So she starts out talking about materials. What did I say in the notes? For the materials, I said... Because she talks about using... Yeah, she talks about using a traditional pencil. She uses a 9B pencil. I really like that. Because that means she can go super dark. And if she's got the skill, she can keep it light. I think if I was to use a 9B pencil at the moment, I would probably struggle to do super light lines. That might be a good little little exercise, though, to practice drawing light lines with a a 9B pencil. But as I was reading this, she says you can use mechanical pencils and stuff. And she says at the end, a pencil sharpener is necessary for keeping your lines crisp. But this is one of the reasons why I love mechanical pencils. So with mechanical pencils, what I love about them is you've always got a sharp point. Because all you have to do is click it and you've got a nice sharp point. And as satisfying as it is to sharpen pencils, especially if you've got a battery operated one, when I'm drawing I I don't like sharpening pencils. I just like to I think sharpening pencils sometimes takes you out of the out of the experience. So I really, I personally prefer mechanical pencils. And this is something she says here. This is her tools that she recommends, but use whatever you want. So again, I like that because she's not saying you've got to use this, use this or that. She then moves on to thumbnails. And again, this is something I'm learning at SVS Learn, the importance of thumbnails. Because you can really play and experiment in your little thumbnails, sort of risk-free. But if you start, if you get halfway through, like a finished portrait, at that point you shouldn't really be, you should really know where you're sort of heading. This this book sounds like it's about to fall apart. (laughs) What I love about little thumbnails is, she's got some in this article, they're all completely different. So you've got one that's looking straight on, looks a little bit sad. You've got the one that she uses, which is a, what's it called, three-quarter perspective. And that's a very sort of, like a fairy type character. You've got a third one who looks a little bit lonely. That's my personal favourite one. She looks, it's got very dark lines on that one. I think that one would have been really nice to have taken further. And then she's got another one which is like a lady looking up to the right. They're all different, but they do sort of all feel the same. I said that before in someone else's article. It's it's weird sometimes how things can look the same but different. So she, she picks the second one, and what did I put in my notes? Oh yeah, 
this this was quite interesting. In this article, she does her little thumbnails, and then she goes straight from her thumbnails into the start working on the final drawing. Whereas what I've always been doing is I do my little thumbnail. I would then do a little sketch, which is is a thumbnail, but it, it's more advanced. But it's still not. It's I can still mess about. So what I can do is I pick my little thumbnail. I can then do a sketch of it, a bit more detailed, and I'll get a better idea of if I'm going to like it. But she just jumped straight to the drawing, which I think that's quite... She's probably got more confidence to do that, I suppose. And then all she all she starts doing is plotting the placements. So in this little thumbnail bit, she goes straight to the piece of paper and starts plotting in the features, which is the next piece of the article and again she's she does something that I keep hearing on all these courses and stuff start with big basic shapes and then start adding your details again I've got a tendency to go too much to the details too soon it's because I enjoy doing the details but I enjoy doing big shapes as well it's a bit weird but I think what happens is I get so excited at the thought of creating the portrait or the character or whatever that I, I want to get straight to the details but basically what she's saying is is this you've got to have a phase of plotting the features to make sure your proportions and everything is in the right place so what did I put in my little notes simple big shapes and light and it reminded me of Will Terry's quote from SVS Lowe where he says keep it simple stupid it's amazing how powerful a quote can be, because that little quote, keep it simple, stupid, it pops into my head all the time. And I, I, I love that quote. That maybe is one of my all-time favourite quotes, I think, because that's, that's the one thing, that quote will pop into my head when I start going towards my tendency of doing details. I'll remember this and it'll, it'll bring me back. So it'll, it'll make me focus on the big shapes. And then she's put here about, I put here about she uses the nose to place the eyes and mouth. This is when it started to remind me of Lee Hammond in her lifelike drawing from portraits book, where she said about the the facial features, the eyes, the nose and the mouth, they're like a trifecta. So they're all linked together and you can you can place the eyes based on the nose and then the mouth. So she talks about that in here, and then once she's got, once she's happy with the placement of things, she then starts moving on to rendering the nose. I love this article because you really see, you really see stuff taking shape. But it's amazing how simple her lines are. But they, it, from a distance, it looks quite realistic. But up close, it looks quite sketchy and loose. So she's got a really nice style in this one. So starting with the nose, what have I put in my notes? Again, light. That word kept coming up. She starts very light and it says, until you are confident, she says, work light until you are confident with the placement of marks. So she says, even draw loads of lines if that's, if that's what you need. Because what I notice is when I'm doing my gesture drawings, when I turn a gesture drawing into a little Sophie, I will very often draw loads and loads of lines before I find the line I want. So that's what she's saying here. Do it lightly. And then she also says, consult reference or look up lighting reference. So what I really liked about this was she, she was starting to become aware of lighting. So as she was drawing the nose, she was aware of lighting. Instead of just like shading it willy nilly, she was a, she was aware of the lighting. Again, that's something I always struggle with as well. I'm I'm slowly starting to become more aware of the lighting to try and have it all follow the rules. But that's basically it. And she talks about how you can place the eyes and everything based off the nose. Then she moves on to sketching the eyes. What I love about this little article is she. 
when she starts working on the eyes, because she does the nose first so that she can get the correct position of the eyes. But when she moves on to the eyes, because she knows everything is in the right position, she then fully renders the eyes. And this again goes into something that Lee Hammond said. She said, what Lee Hammond said was, render, she didn't say exactly like this, but what she said was, fully render the eyes, because if the eyes aren't right, it doesn't matter. The rest of the portrait, will, it, it won't be right. It's almost like the eyes are... 90% of the portrait so if the eyes are right the rest of the portrait could be not as good but it's like they say the eyes are the gateway to the soul so I just got reminded that here is like really focus on the eyes I love the eyes that she's done on this portrait they're very big and full they feel alive again like it's like it is like the soul of the character is in those eyes and because those eyes are so dark, the eyes pop, so that creates the focus. She talks about that here, and she's, she talks about light and dark lines, and how you don't want to go too dark, because otherwise it would look like she's got makeup on, unless you want it to look like she's got makeup on. What did I put in my little notes? Yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I like that. She's talking about how use reference if you need to use your rubber and multiple lines again find the line that you need this is when I started thinking about that how drawing is like a puzzle thinking ahead it's something I love is sometimes when I was doing a portrait drawing sometimes I would I would be convinced there was something wrong with the nose and I'd spend like an hour changing the lines of the nose trying to get it right and then I would leave it the next day I would come back and I would realize that there was something wrong with the eye so I would change the eye and all of a sudden the nose was right <laughs> so again like a paradox the issue the problem with the image or the drawing may not be at the place where the problem appears because everything's linked together it's absolutely fascinating I do feel like drawing, doing a portrait drawing, you really start to, you really start to get a beautiful understanding of how everything is linked together. It's it's almost spiritual, really, because with with spirituality, you 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 start to realise that everybody is the same person, so we're all linked together, and you need negative people for positive people. It's all linked together. Drawing. For me, drawing is almost like a, it's like a physical representation of spirituality. It's, it's quite amazing. And then after the eyes, she moves on to the mouth. Her character's got really nice thick lips. So she said something here, which I hadn't really, I hadn't really observed before. So what is it she says? Oh yeah. She talks about vertical strokes to emulate the forms and texture of the lips. And again, too heavy will look like she got lipstick on. So I hadn't really, I had not really been aware of that before. When you're rendering lips, you want the, the lines to f go vertically. So again, that's something that's something nice to remember, I think. I like that she's got really nice lips and then she moves on to the eyelashes now this is my favorite bit eyelashes in hair is my favorite bit of realistic pencil drawings because with eyelashes it's it's the same as hair it's it's where you can be really free you can just you can go really expressive with the eyelashes and i've always loved super long eyelashes and this reminded me of something. So I did a portrait drawing in 2013. <laughs> 2013. And what I did was, I did exactly what she's done here, but I did it even more extreme. So in this article, she has two images side by side. One of them, she's got no eyelashes. Next to it is exactly the same drawing, but she's got eyelashes. And you can really see the power of eyelashes. Like without the eyelashes, 
they look, people look a bit weird or different. So what, it reminded me of this time. What I did was, this one time at band camp, <laughs> no, this one time, what I did was I had a portrait drawing. I fully rendered the eyes, the mouth and the nose, which is what I've always done. I always start with those three. But then what I did was, instead of doing the eyelashes, I thought, I'm not going to do the eyelashes until right at the very end. And what I did was I, I completely rendered the hair, all of the skin. I got the portrait as realistic as I could and finished, but she didn't have any eyelashes. And then I finished the eyelashes and I've got a work in progress image. It, it was on my website. It's not at the moment because it's broken. But it was, it was just amazing to me how completely different the character looked or the, the portrait so because it was a bit worrying because right towards the end I was looking at the the portrait thinking that doesn't really look like her but I just had to have like trust that when I put the eyelashes it would look right the moment I put the eyelashes on it looked just like the reference photo so it's amazing those eyelashes I would almost say eyelashes are the most I would say they're the most important piece of the drawing really the eyes are the most important piece but the eyelashes are the most important piece of the eyes so it's almost like the eyelashes are the most important piece i feel like i feel like that to be honest and then what she's also said here is she started talking about how at this stage so as she's working on the eyelashes she begins to add some shading to the cheeks and cheekbones and she talks about Well, she says she smudges it with a finger, but she does mention about tortillions, which are these... Tortillions are these little paper things which allow you to blend beautifully. But she says, what I liked about that was, I could see that without her saying it, what she was doing was she was realising that the shape of the cheeks and stuff, it was important for her to render the eyes. So it's almost like... She couldn't fully render the eyes without knowing where the cheeks were. So again, it's like everything's related to each other. It's quite amazing. The next bit, she talks about filling in the eyebrows. So again, it's cool. This I love this article because you've got... A, a finished portrait is beautiful, but you see it in all its different phases. So there's one phase where the, the character has no hair. But even in that phase, she looks absolutely beautiful. But what I love is, you can see all of her messy lines. You can see all of her like construction lines underneath the finished lines. It's quite nice. And her finished portrait, it has got like areas of detail, mainly the eyes and the hair. But even the hair, you have some parts of the hair that there's, there's almost hardly any pencil strokes. It's fascinating looking at this. So, filling in the eyebrows. What did I put in my notes? Dun, 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 dun. Combination of... Yeah. Combination of smudging and detail lines. This, again, is something Lee Hammond said about. So, Lee Hammond, in her book, when she was talking about rendering hair, realistic hair, if you, what you've got to do is, to make it nice and soft and feel like it's got a lot of depth to it you have to have a combination of detail and well smudging but I call it blending so you put your detailed strokes in and then you you blend it so what that does is it softens it but again kind of paradoxically you end up with detail and like smudgy at the same time which is cool Whereas if, it, if you didn't smudge it, it would look a bit weird because it would look like the hairs were just individual hairs on the head. Whereas when you smudge it, it looks like you've got lots of hairs underneath. So even though you can't see any detail, it's like that little bit of smudging, the eye, like eyebrows, it's almost like insinuating hairs, which is quite cool. And she says, starting the hair... No, we've moved on to the wrong PC, I think. Everything relates... Oh, yeah, she talks about sharpening your pencil 
and pressing harder. Once all facial features have been defined, yeah, once the facial features have been defined, move on to your eyebrows. <laughs> Again, I'll put everything's related. You change something here, it changes something over here. Darker and lighter, vice versa. It's, it's the same sort of thing. If you make, you might look at your portrait and you think that needs to be darker, but sometimes it doesn't. What actually needs to happen is the bits around it need to become lighter because you can make something darker by making everything else lighter. It's, it's amazing. I do love drawing the way it's like it's almost drawing is almost showing you the illusionary nature of physical things. It's cool. Next bit, she moves on to starting the hair. This is my favourite piece of portrait drawing. So she talks about treating the hair as big chunks. And then she's, she says about fast, and I've said confident long lines. Because if you're doing fast lines, that means you're going you're gonna to be forced to do confident lines. Because you've got to commit. So if you're doing long, if you're doing fast lines, you've got to commit to the line, which means you're going to have confident lines. And she even says here, if you if you don't go fast, you're going to end up. Where is it? She says something. Move fast and don't focus on exact placement for each line, as that will make your lines shakier. In other words, it'll make them look less confident, and it won't look like hair. There's really, there's lots of little bits of wisdom in here. And this week's inspirational quote is actually going to come from this piece of the article. Her inspirational quote is, The best part of drawing from your imagination is letting the hair do its own thing. I like to make it bouncy and not too sub subservient to the rules of gravity. Again, I love this little thing. I talk, I talk about the quote at the end of the episode, but this little bit here about making it bouncy and not subservient to the rules of gravity it's almost like she's following the rules by finding the chunks of the hair so she's got the hair looking it will look realistic because she's understood the the direction of things and chunks but she's not following the rules of gravity so she's allowing herself to play and make things up it's cool <laughs> it is cool that's basically it really. She's got a little little tip here about line weights where she talks about like smudging and making things you can make things look out of focus and stuff. It's quite a good little bit that. And then we're on to the final couple of pages of this article. So she moves on to further detailing. I've put it in my little notes about a mirror can be used for reference which is quite cool. Again, it reminded me of this other article from Character Design Quarterly magazine where the bloke, he couldn't find any reference so he started taking photos of himself. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. You could just get a mirror and study your eyebrows in the mirror or, and then you can use that in your, in your drawing. So it's, it's like you, yourself, are, can be a reference for the drawing, which is cool. And then just put here darker strands. Something about darker strands, where's this? Render the hair by using heavier strokes in areas where the hair is bending or in shadow. She said to create a realistic look, draw in the same direction that the hair is flowing. So again, what I've really pulled away from this is one of the important things with drawing is studying. Because You've got to study before you start drawing to know the direction of the hair. Because once you know the direction of the hair, you can then start playing around. Because you can, as long as you're following the direction of the hair, you can sort of make it do whatever you want. Whereas if you're, if you haven't understood the direction of the hair, if you start playing around, it's going to look stupid. Because <laughs> it, it won't look, it won't look like hair. So. That was quite cool. There must be a little quote in here that I thought was cool. Here we go. Use the same concepts that you used from the previous steps. Darker strokes on areas in shadow. 
curved shading lines to suggest a rounded surface and slight smudging to soften soften the image <laughs> again what I liked about that is she's combining different types of pencil strokes it goes into again what Jake Parker said in SVS Learn how you want to learn all these different types of strokes and then when you're doing your finished drawing you can start pulling them all in together it's quite cool use your imagination and incorporate into the strands of hair that you have drawn and the final piece she talks about finishing touches so she says continue mending the hair until you are content with the level of detail again reminds me of something Lee Hammond said she said if you're doing a realistic drawing you've got to keep drawing rendering the hair when you think you've finished rendering the hair you're probably not even halfway there because the more and more you render hair the more thicker and like depth it's going to look but it does get to a point where what's it called diminishing returns it's almost like you could spend a hundred hours <laughs> yeah you could spend like a hundred hours and at some point you're going to spend an hour just for like a little piece of like you'll spend an hour and it will only make it look at about 0.5% more depth whereas before you'd spend an hour it'd look it would look about 30% more depth so you have to you have to know when the point is to stop rendering and I feel like you just you start to you sort of just you start to know that at some point you just know but when you're starting out especially she said Lee Hammond said about when you think you've finished you're not so just keep going so it's again it's another sort of mind thing your mind will say you finished rendering the hair now you have to ignore that and just keep going and it's amazing how when you thought you were finished when you've actually finished it's amazing how much better it is so if you had stopped when you thought you were finished yeah it it wouldn't have been as good but the thing with this drawing here that Sarah what's she called Sarah Teepees has done is she's not really going for realism it's it's more of a stylized thing so I absolutely love this the way she's done her hair what she's done is it's squiggly and then at some points there's just no hair it's amazing when you look at it from a distance those the little bit where there's only little bits of a few lines it's just enough lines to show you that there's it's the shape of hair at that point you're only seeing the shape of hair whereas at the top where she's put more lines you're sort of getting the texture of the hair but this goes into something that Bert Dodgson said in his book Keys to Drawing but Bert Dodgson said about getting the balance between I think he called it articulated drawing and subjective drawing so articulated is detail subjective is it's more like squiggly so it's not detailed and if you can combine the two you can you can make it so that the the viewer looking at the art if you give them enough detail when they look at the stuff that isn't detail they'll be able to fill in the bank the blanks so it's almost like it, it then becomes like a satisfying experience for the person looking at your drawing because they feel like they're they feel like they're part of the experience which is quite cool because it's very tempting I would imagine I haven't actually drawn a, a portrait from my imagination yet but I'd imagine for me especially it would be very tempting to want to render the whole hair because in a realistic pencil drawing you are rendering the whole lot but yeah this is something I would like to experiment with I, I bet it's really hard to do that because when you look at it like this it looks really it looks really easy or simple she she's making it look simple because it's just squiggles but I think you there's a skill to knowing not what to draw so like sometimes knowing not what to draw is as important as knowing what to draw and I think again I think that's something you're gonna have to learn over time but right at the very end she talks about yeah she's thinking about focus moving the viewer's eyes so that's like she starts thinking about what is it she says here 
I opt to keep the hair relatively loose at the bottom to give the piece a dreamy look which fills in with the title ethereal so she's managed to fulfill the criteria of the article and then and it says to to give a the piece a dreamy look and to focus the viewer's attention on the character's face and eyes so again she's she's not just drawing she's also thinking about yeah she's thinking about what the viewer is going to be looking at again i think that's a skill you've got to learn as well how to guide the viewer's eyes so i, I already know about if you make things darker high contrast is makes things pop so yeah and less lines less focus more lines more focus <laughs> it's quite cool it's quite quite simple something i really liked about this is she's got a little tip about drawing freckles and again you've got two images here one without the freckles one with the freckles it's amazing how much i would say character those freckles brings to the character so it's, it's almost like right at the very end she suddenly like sprinkles in some character to this character that's basically it Sarah Teepees I hope that's how you say her name that's basically it what did I come away from this article thinking it's made me realise that sometimes less is more because I look at this and it's absolutely beautiful large parts of this drawing there's very few lines so less is more and i just love how again even with her shading it's like her shading is not super detailed it's but it just works so nicely A beautiful feel, feeling to her character and i think that's the main thing really she's managed to create a character with a lot of character so little Dennis has decided it is time to finish that one and did you enjoy that Dennis I was gonna say no then he <laughs> he but uh, Dennis liked that one I, I hope you liked it that's basically it really so you can find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com and you can find video and all the rest of it at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson this week's inspirational quote it actually goes to Sarah Tepes if that's how you pronounce it Sarah T-E-P-E-S from this article I really like this this little quote because it kind of sums up the playfulness of drawing from your imagination which I think is lacking from realistic when you're drawing realistically especially if you're drawing from reference photos it is fun and it is it's rewarding and satisfying but it's not as playful so it is not as fun as drawing from imagination so what she says here is i'll read the little quote and i'm going to say something so the little quote is the best part of drawing from your imagination is letting the hair do its own thing. Why I love that little quote so much is because it highlights something else about drawing. And this is even true with realistic pencil drawings. You'll be drawing. It's especially true with painting. I've done a little bit of painting. I did a 30 and 30 painting challenge. And throughout that, especially with abstract painting, I really noticed this. But when you're drawing or painting you you've got an idea of what you want to do especially with like from your imagination you've got an idea of what you want to do but what will happen is the drawing almost starts to draw it for you so in a weird way it's like you and the drawing are drawing together so the finished piece of artwork it's it's almost got a life of its own and and this is a very much because i i talked about once before in 2013 I had this very strange experience where I was drawing and I suddenly it was like I went out of my body I was watching my hand draw on its own and that kind of sums it up there's a there's a point when you're drawing where you're not drawing anymore 
it's like it's like something else is drawing it's really weird that but i love this quote and this thing here about how fun it is to draw draw the hair and let it do its own thing that drawing hair is my favorite part of realistic pencil drawing because the realistic pencil drawing you've got to be so precise and really focused as soon as you get to the hair you can just as long as you've got the structure of the hair and you know you've placed it all you can then just go crazy with it and I've always loved that it's why one of the main reasons I love drawing female portraits is because the hair can just come alive I love that so that's basically this week's inspirational quote the best part of drawing from your imagination is letting the hair do its own thing so tepes do that so tepes beautiful beautiful artist Bye, 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 bye,